Chinese books, where to start. I know when I was first getting into reading in a new language, it can be so intimidating to know what to read, what's good, what's at your level. Maybe apart from something like Journey to the West, you might not have ever even heard of a single novel. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Luke Truman. So today I want to share with you the last 10 books that I read in Chinese from book 11 to book 20. I'm going to give you what I thought about them in terms of content, difficulty, where to get them from, and yeah, let's get things started. So if you remember, my, I did a video of this a while back with the first 10 books that I read in Chinese. And the last one was a book by a Taiwanese author called Zhou Ba Dao. And the book was Na Xun Yin Wo Yi Chi Dui The New Hire. And this book was basically, I've watched the film already with my friends. Zhou Ba Dao is a very famous novelist and director in Taiwan. So a lot of his books then later get turned into films which is really cool because you can watch and read to the same content and you can kind of get the repetition that way. So after reading his one book, um, and I think the English name for the film at least is The Apple in Your Eye, then I really enjoyed the film. I read the book. I thought the book was really good as well. So I wanted to try some of his other books. So I'm going to leave the links to everything in the description. But the next book that I read, number 11, was a book by the same author. So the book's title is Sha Shou Liu Li Shun An De Hua. And I picked this just because it had Sha Shou in the name and I thought it might be kind of a murder mystery sort of thing because it's got the word assassin in there, which is Sha Shou. And I started reading the book and it started off really, really dark. I remember, and I'm only going to spoil the first chapter. If you don't want to hear this at all, then skip over this bit. But in the first chapter, this girl gets addicted to online gaming and then she gets pulled in, meets a guy online who later becomes a boyfriend. And, and then the boyfriend manipulates her, gaslights her, and she ends up sleeping with his friend to, because his friend had never done it before. And it turns out it was tricking her. He was actually using her to get money. So he was kind of taking her in on an online game. And then, and then from there, she got addicted to online games and, and ended up becoming a prostitute in Taiwan. So, and then later on in the book, there's a murder. Someone gets killed by a professional hitman. Um, who has really powerful fists. He knocks them, he kills them in a single punch. And then later on, um, through her, the girl's work, you know, um, as a hooker in Taiwan, she ends up coming close to this hitman. And then it's about how the relationship develops and how things happen there. So that was the book. Um, to be honest, some bits of the book were a bit messed up. Some bits were a bit dark, um, especially the start of the book. But in terms of difficulty, it wasn't actually that difficult. If you've read one of Joel Batadal's other books, I think they're all similar. So it was about the same difficulty as The Apple in Your Eye. Um, so all in all, I'd say it was a okay read. It, the story was a bit weird. Um, I preferred The Apple in Your Eye. Um, this, and again, I, I picked this because it had Shao Shou in the name, but it actually turned out to be a lot more romance based than I originally thought. Um, and again, I'll leave a link to the description. I'll leave a link to where I downloaded it in the description. And I got it for free off a website called howdo.net. Next up on the list for number twelve, we have another Taiwanese author called San Mao. Now, San Mao was really famous before. She was famous for writing a lot of travel books for her, accompanying with her foreign husband, who I, if I remember right, was from Sweden, but it was somewhere not a english-speaking country but i think they used english to communicate and it was a travel adventure book traveling around in different countries and also going over the cultural differences that she experienced between her and her husband so the in the setting of the book her husband gets a job in the sahara desert and she leaves taiwan and her family to go over and accompany her husband in taiwan and it's just about the different adventures and troubles and struggles that they get into while they're there so in terms of difficulty, this book is harder than Joel Bardal's books. Um, most of Samuel's books tend to be um, probably better written from a linguistic point of view. They tend to be a bit harder. If you're learning languages and you're interested in the dynamic of how different cultures behave, especially if you're in a multi, uh, if, you, if you're in an international relationship like Samuel and her husband is, I think you'll find this book very interesting and probably pretty relatable. In terms of difficulty, although it is harder than Joel Bardal, it's still not as hard as something like a wuxia novel or a historic novel, something like that, because it is mostly romance based. And if you're worried about difficulty, you can always use something like Kindle or Link to help you out. So all in all, I'd recommend this one. I enjoyed this a lot more than um, the Shao Shou one. And yeah, it was really good. So I'd definitely recommend this one. Next, number three in this list, or number 13 overall, is about an American who gave up his American citizenship to go live in Taiwan and join the Taiwanese military. In the introduction to the book, he gets said he asked a lot, he gets asked a lot, why did he want to 
leave America to go to Taiwan and why would he even want to join the military and he talks about that he goes through his journey in the military in Taiwan his journey trying to integrate into Taiwanese society and get recognized as an equal and the struggles that he faced and what he actually did during his time during the military so originally I found this through an interview that from one of my favorite Taiwanese YouTubers called TK Story. And I'll leave a link to the video in the description with the link to this book. Um, and basically what he did, he was interviewing him about his, his experience in Taiwan, how he's lived in Taiwan for 30 years and still gets treated as a foreigner. He speaks amazing Mandarin, much better than I do. He can speak Taiwanese as well. He's lived there for 30 plus years and he still goes into 7-Eleven and gets people hide behind the counter because they're afraid that they can't speak English. So it's talk originally it caught my eye because I was living in Taiwan at the time and some of the same things I was encountering. So as a foreigner trying to go to Taiwan, integrate into social groups that I found it very interesting and insightful wanting to learn more about it. So in terms of if you are interested in going to Asian cultural society, not necessarily just Taiwan, but any, then I think this book is very, very interesting. Now, the interesting thing about this book as well is that there's no ebook available so from book one up to book 12 i had never actually read a paperback book before and i was kind of nervous because i thought it would be overwhelming not being able to look up words online through an e-dictionary but um because this book was only available as a paperback and i wanted to read it so badly i ended up ordering it off books.taiwan and when it arrived this was my first paperback book in chinese um, because I lent this to one of my friends, I don't actually have it with me, but I'll put up some pictures on the screen now. I'll put them on the front cover and also the first page so you can check out what it's like in terms of difficulty level. All in all, again, I I don't think the difficulty level was that much. I found it a bit harder than some of the other books that I read purely because it was paperback and not an ebook. But the word choices he uses are not actually that bad. As far as I know, it's only available in Chinese, but he did write the original in English and then pay someone to translate it over. You don't have to worry about any weird uses of Chinese for it being written by a foreigner. Obviously, there was some translation bits, which means the concepts used might appear a bit more Western at times. But overall, I don't think it's something to worry about. And I found this really, really interesting. And I would 100% recommend this one. So following that, after reading my first paperback book in Chinese, I wanted to try and read others. So one that got recommended to me a few times was a book called The Alchemist. I picked up this book again from Books.Taiwan. I ordered it online. And one of the first thing that strikes me about this book is just all of the illustrations in the book are absolutely stunning. This book is about, a, it, this book revolves a lot around destiny and going out on an adventure from a, a boy to try and find a hidden treasure in the pyramids in the desert. And he goes and kind of goes on an adventure and speaks, speaks to a lot of different people. He's a shepherd originally. Hence, the Chinese name has Shepherd in the title, and it's a really interesting story. I got a lot of the similar vibes to The Little Prince. But this book is about 200 pages long overall, and it's a lot longer. So if you look, if you like The Little Prince, that sort of story, and you're looking for something longer, and you, you want, you like books with good illustrations, then this is definitely something to check out. So again, on the paperback books list, going to fifth on the list, or my 15th book overall, so a bit of a backstory behind why I bought this book. Again, I was looking for paperback books because I recently discovered I can actually access them at this point and I wanted to look into it more. So what I did is I went around some of the really big bookstores in Taiwan and I found it really overwhelming. You know, there's thousands of books there in lots of different categories. There's classics, there's literature, there's, literature, there's translated books, there's psychology, there's whatever. There's, there's so much there, I found it overwhelming. And apart from seeing books that I already know, I found it really hard just to try and flip through and figure out what I wanted to read. So what I ended up doing is I ended up visiting about five or six different 7-Elevens and family marts around me. Because if you go to Taiwan and you go into a family mart or a 7-Eleven, they have a book section inside there that has maybe between five and ten books. So this is really cool because it lets you see what's really popular at the time. If it's not popular, it's not going to sell and they won't be in there because they've got that little space. So all the books that are sold in 7-Eleven and Family Mart tend to be quite popular ones because there's only five books there instead of about two, th instead of thousands, then it makes it a lot more accessible to look through and see what you're interested in. Another reason I picked this is because I previously had great experience using thriller books to learn with because a lot of the time the chapters are shorter and the, sp the suspense of the plot keeps me entertained and wanting to read on. As for this author, Ling Jing, and I've actually read another one of her books, not on this list, but it'll be in my next video, 20 to 30. 
um, is that she's a really popular thriller writer in Taiwan. And when I went into one of the 7-Elevens, I remember, I think there was about 10 books in the store and five of them were hers. So this is someone who's incredibly popular in Taiwan and has a lot of different books revolving around the thriller sort of genre. I wouldn't go as far to say horror. There is some gore in a lot of them, but there's also a lot of mystery. There's also a lot of fight scenes and stuff like that. Um, And again, I haven't read the book for quite a long time, but if I remember correctly in the introduction, there's a woman who's walking around and doesn't really know what's going on. She's lost her memories. Um, she's floating around in, as kind of like a spectre and she's losing her body and it's, her body's like fading and she keeps on hearing this bell noise. She's running away. She has no idea what's going on and then this woman saves her. And the title of this book is Gui Pu Shu Suo. And this is actually the second one in the series. And the woman is a leader of a team who investigates, who, who investigates different things going wrong in terms of the spirit world and in terms of crimes and imbalances and stuff like that and i think if i remember right king yem is in this um it also at one point they've got some of the stones that was made by nuwa so it involves a lot about chinese not a lot it involves bits about chinese mythology it's a thriller story the plot's not too complicated and it's incredibly popular in taiwan so the next one on the list book 16 the sixth one i've put in this list is Atomic Habits by James Clear or Yuan Zi Xu Guan. And I've talked about this one a lot on Twitter. I've talked about this to people in interviews, so you probably know I've read this already. But if you're interested in learning in self-development and self-improvement, that sort of content, this book is so, so, so interesting. And I found it incredibly informative and incredibly useful. So if you're into learning, I'd recommend reading it. If it's too difficult in Chinese, you can always pick it up in English. But Actually, one thing I wanted to say quickly is if you're looking at getting into reading in a new language and you're not quite into the stage where you can tackle novels, I think non-fiction on some topics can be a lot easier to tackle compared to fiction because in fiction they use a lot of poetic and indirect language, descriptive language, whereas in a lot of non-fiction they speak very directly into the point. So if you take something on a fic- on a non-fiction topic that's complicated, like say you talk about the history of China, you can have lots of references you don't understand. If you talk about nutrition or science or engineering, there's going to be lots of words you don't know because there's lots of technical vocabulary that you haven't learned yet. But if you talk about something like language learning, like habit building, like self-improvement and things like that, generally speaking, the vocabulary range they use is actually quite small. So it's accessible a lot to beginners and especially if you read on someone like kindle and you're looking at something you're looking for something that's interesting not too complicated to get into books then non-fiction is a really good way to go especially around learning so my first book i read in chinese and spanish was steve kaufman's book i've also read benny lewis's book and i've read another one about a taiwanese teacher and none of them i found that difficult none of them i found that difficult there was some problems in vocab coming up that I didn't know in terms of formal language, especially in Steve's because it was the first one I read. But once you get used to the bit more formal words here and there, it's nothing to worry about whatsoever. And I would definitely recommend it. I enjoyed this one a lot. All right, so number seven on this list or the 17th book that I read in Chinese is probably one of the most influential books that's ever been written, period. So the name of the book is Kuang Ren Re Ji or The Diary of a Madman and first book to be written in Bai Huawen, which is also known as vernacular Chinese. Really what vernacular Chinese means is it's just written as it's spoken. So a lot of books before this that were written closely to how people were spoken, they were speaking differently to how they speak now, or it has a lot of elements from classical Chinese in there, or there were just books that were completely in classic Chinese. So this book was in the early 1900s, if I remember right. And apart from the first, the first paragraph to this book is in classical Chinese and it's incredibly difficult to understand. But after the first paragraph, and the book is about seven pages long, so it's super, super short, it was actually really easy to understand and really easy to follow. There's an audiobook on Shimalaya that I listened to the whole thing. The voice acting is really good and the whole recording is about an hour and a half long. So even if you don't have time to read it, I'd recommend listening to the book. It's so quick and it's really interesting. It's about a man who's going mad and he's writing in a journal he thinks people are trying to eat him and it's about him starting to suspect the people around him and how he slowly slowly gets more suspicious of the people around him and gets more and more insane as the book progresses and again it's really short really interesting and one of the most influential books 
period in Chinese that's ever been written because it was the first one that was written in modern vernacular Chinese. So the next book is by the same author, Lu Xuan, and again, it's really, really short. I think this one was, if I remember correctly, about 10 to 15 pages long, so it was a bit longer than the last one. Um, I remember the themes being quite depressing, but honestly, in terms of what happened in the book, it didn't leave that big an impression on me. I didn't actually enjoy it that much, but I just read it because it was short and I haven't really got much to say on this one. Um, so again, I'll leave a link to the details in the description, um, but I'm just going to skip over and go on to the next one. So the next book on this list is Fang Si Qi, The Chu Lian Le Yuan. And Fang Si Qi is the name of the main character. Chu Lian is first love and Le Yuan is paradise. So it's Fang Si Qi, first love paradise. And this book was written in about 2017. And it very, very quickly, for all the wrong reasons, became one of the most famous books in Taiwan and China. So what do I mean by this? This book contains a lot of very strong themes. Um, the author of the book, when she was little, was when she was in um, cram school with her English teacher, ended up getting sexually abused by her teacher. And then she had a lot of mental problems going on and was very emotionally scarred after what her teacher did to her. So... Years down the line, she wrote a book with the fictional character Fang Siji, and a lot of it's based on her actual experiences, but it's unclear how much of it is reality and how much of it is fictional for the sake of the book. So I think it's worth a go. You can buy it in terms of the ebook, um, but just be prepared, and it has a lot of heavy themes throughout the book. And there is also an audiobook available on Shimalaya. So the next and the last book on the list, the 10th book on this list and the 20th one I've read in total, and I mentioned this in my interview with Steve Kaufman if you follow this channel, is a book called Luo Tuo Shangs. And what it does is it follows the story of a rickshaw driver, which is basically kind of like if you imagine a horse and carriage where the horse pulls the, pulls the carriage and it gets people from places to places well back in China at the time. Um... A lot of people couldn't afford horses, so a lot of poor people would be pulling the chariots behind them, and they're what's called a rickshaw boy. And it was about this man who's young, strong, tall, and dreams of owning his own rickshaw so he can own his own business and doesn't have to rent anymore. And I th originally thought this was going to be a bit of a light-hearted story. Um, again, I don't think it was that long. I think it was about 150 pages. In terms of difficulty level, again... It's probably more difficult than the previous books I've read. Um, so I wouldn't recommend going in into it as your first novel. I'd recommend going and reading a few other ones like Joe Ba Dao Sam Lao sort of thing or some thriller books, etc. Non-fiction and then maybe come to this when you've had a bit more practice. But the audiobook does help. You can get it on Kindle. Again, you can look up words really easily. Um, but in terms of the themes of the book, this book is so Chinese it goes on during time of the war, so he has run into soldiers, um, lots of things go wrong, and it's one of those things in Chinese novels, a lot of famous ones, like I felt the same thing with Hua Zhe. They just put the characters through so much struggle just time and time again, and just looking and seeing how they bounce back, and then you can see in the characters, from the characters' point of view, that reason they, they, they get hit really hard and they come back and they get hit really hard again and then they come back and then their willpower just diminishes over time as they just become more and more strived with troubles throughout the series of the novel so again i thought this was going to be a light book it's got some depressing themes but this book is so chinese in terms of the themes in this book and i think it does give you an appreciation in terms of the culture if you put in the, the perspective why sometimes when you meet someone in chinese do they say have you eaten yet? Or if you look at someone in Chinese you haven't seen them in a while and they look a bit bigger in the face, you can tell tell them they've put on weight and it's a compliment because it's showing that they're healthy. If you living through the eyes of Shangzi in this book, it's it's really apparent that the struggle for food and the struggle to just get by every day, that why things like this came about in the first place. So if you're looking at learning more about Chinese culture and you want to do it through novels, this one is a really good one to pick for it, as well as another book that I read in my last 10 list called Hua Zhe. And I'd rec I recommend both of them, and I'll leave a link to my last 10 books video in this in the description as well. 
Yeah, that's it for today's video. I will leave a link to everything that I talked about in the description. For the ones that are ebooks, I'm going to leave some information in terms of statistics about what's in the book in terms of character level and stuff like that. So hopefully that's interesting and useful for you guys as well when you're trying to pick on what's the right difficulty level. For the ones that I read in terms of paperback, I don't have the PDF documents, I don't have the text documents, so I can't analyze them. So that's why I've just showed you pictures of the first page so you can at least get an idea of what it might be like and if it's at your level or not. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this sort of content, please give it a like to let me know you like it. Give me a comment for what you want to see in the future or any thoughts or recommendations you have for me for novels. I really, really am trying to learn more about Chinese literature, so any recommendations you have at all is greatly appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content relating to learning Chinese and new videos when you get them. <laughs> Peace.